Hi, thanks for coming to my channel. This is Midnight Moon Tarot and I'm Diana. This reading is for the astrological sign of Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, or anywhere in your birth chart that Capricorn might appear. Also, if you're new to my channel, I'd like to take just a second and invite you to subscribe and click that little bell so that you're sure to be notified whenever I upload new content. Also, in the description box below, you'll find links to my social media, my Patreon, my PayPal, and links to some really cool things on Amazon I think you guys will like. Okay, so this reading is for May 2020. Keeping in mind that all tarot readings are timeless. So whether you come across this reading right after I upload, a week, month, or even a year or so from now, if you feel drawn to watch it, most likely you'll find a message for you within the reading. And if it doesn't completely resonate with you, keep the parts that do, disregard the rest, switch the roles around, never force it to fit. But if you know your other planetary placements, like I mentioned at the beginning, of the intro, then you can listen to those signs as well for additional messages. And you can also send me an email at midnightmoontaro at gmail.com and request a personalized reading based on your information. Okay, so let's go ahead and calibrate these cards to the astrological sign of Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising Venus, and Jupiter. And ask our angels, guides, and ancestors for any love messages for Capricorn for May 2020. Spirit, what love messages do you have for Capricorn for May 2020? Spirit, what love messages do you have for Capricorn May 2020? Okay, just another time or two here. Spirit, what love messages do you have for Capricorn? All right, I'm going to go ahead and divide these into three stacks. One, two, and three. All right, the card on the bottom of the deck is the Three of Cups, okay? Now, this is the overall energy for this reading. So, as we go through this spread, I'm going to show you how this card's going to relate to the different cards that come up. And the Three of Cards, the Three of Cups is always about, you know, taking that time out to enjoy yourself, to have time of celebration with your friends and family. Of course, this is a small group, and we're all supposed to be social distancing and keeping our groups all small. So, you know... But it's time. It's time to enjoy all this new um, beginnings that everybody is going through and experiencing. And, you know, nothing's ever really going to be the same again as far as that goes. But definitely, this is a time of celebration that you're going to be entering into. Okay, now, for those of you who are new here, I do four rows, okay? The first row is for you. Uh, what you may have recently have experienced, things that you are going through, um, people, situations, options that are coming towards you. All right. The second column is the same thing, only it's for your twin flame, soulmate, divine counterpart, karmic partner. This could be an ex that you still have those really deep soul ties with that you really want a reconciliation with. It could be somebody completely new, but however, it's usually the person that you think of the most, the one that you're thinking about when you first wake up in the morning and the last one you think about at night before you go to sleep. The third column is about obstacles and challenges, uh, our fears and anxieties. It doesn't really have anything to do with what's actually uh, going on, but it does you do have to be careful because these are the things that you're worried about and you're thinking about. So if it is something that's really oppressive or hurtful to you, be careful that you don't dwell on it too much, that it you don't let it keep you from moving forward in your life. If you think about that too much, you can actually manifest that scenario in your life, okay? All right, the last column is about outcome, all right? So, all right. Now, I've just laid out two cards in each row for a total of eight cards. I'm going to uh, do this two more times for a grand total of 24 cards. And by the time we get to the end of the reading after 24 cards, generally, we have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Occasionally, I'll draw a clarifier or two if it ends kind of on a 
unbalanced note. So right off the bat for you, we have the death card as well as judgment. And this is telling me that even though you, you may have just recently faced the end of a new situation, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's over. It means that you are hoping for and there is a chance of reconciliation for this situation that's going on. Whether, uh, you know, it could be a long-time partner you've been with. It could be, uh, you know, you were just starting something with someone and the world interrupted, all right? But yes, there's definitely this resurrection. Everything's coming back, okay? Uh, death card, you can look at it like an opportunity, you know, because it ends a cycle that maybe wasn't so beneficial for you, okay? It's not always just a really bad card. It opens up and removes those energies so that the new energies can come in. Now, the partner is feeling, uh, you know, they are longing for that Ten of Cups situation. They're wanting that happily ever after. This is probably a fire sign, you know, Aries, Sagittarius, Leo. This is somebody who is really, really focused on relationships and wanting that um, that whole package with you. So you may be uh, introduced to have someone new come into your life, but this is the person who, right off the bat, is going to uh, necessarily, you know, want you to uh, be with them. It doesn't necessarily mean that you want to be with them because chemistry. It's always a really big thing. I've had people come into my life and, you know, they were really pursuant and I just wasn't feeling it. And you don't really, really want to have to be rude, but sometimes you end up just having to, you know, block and eliminate people out of your life. And that's kind of the energy that I'm getting from this. You're going to have someone that is really almost to the point of being annoyed. Okay, they made their presence known, but every time you turn around, they're in your inboxing you, or they're calling you, or they're texting you, or something. And it, it's like you cringe when you see it, but you don't know why because you don't really know this person. Okay, so just, just because there's people coming into your life on a romantic level doesn't mean that they are the person that's right for you, or you know. You might be totally right for them, but they're not right for you. So when we get to your obstacles and challenges, you know, after you've had this little period of ending with a partner, you're kind of feeling left out in the cold. You feel maybe rejected. This is a period of time where you really need to take time to yourself and decide what it is that you want to do with your life and where you want to go. If you want to work on reconciling with your partner or if you want to go ahead and move forward. Uh, on the outcome, we do have the Ace of Wands as well as the Eight of Wands, okay? Say that three times really fast, okay? But listen, this, this Ace of Wands, this is about those new beginnings. This is about uh, new life. You see all the, the new brand new green leaves sprouting from this wand, but it also has to do with passion and uh, you know, this is energy that's coming in really, really quick. You may find that, you know, you are finding yourself attracted to a new person, okay? We don't know who that person is yet, but we're going to find out, okay? Now, in the second set of cards here, we have that Ten of Swords showing up as well as the Five of Swords. All right, your partner has Hermit and the Queen of Swords, Obstacles and Challenges, Two of Pentacles and the Eight of Cups. And in your outcome, we have the Seven of Wands as well as the Ten of Wands. So yeah, you know, that ending really broke your heart. It really made you feel betrayed. It, it's, you know, to the point that, okay, you may be, become just a little bit petty. You may uh, decide to vocalize, you know, and maybe not such nice ways, but you know, that may be what you need to do to heal. It's not really ever a good idea to be petty. You know, we all think about taking the high road and being a little classier than, you know, poking fun of our old partner or, you know, doing, you know, blaming and name calling and things like that. That's, you know, that's going to be totally up to you whether you take that path or not. But I will tell you that it will lower your vibrational level, okay? And it will put roadblocks in 
for positive energy that wants to come back because whatever you're putting out there that's what's going to come back to you okay so if you uh, feel like you need to take a little bit of a uh, sweet revenge on someone just remember you know that may be what you get back later now your partner is thinking about the situation they are thinking about you know how did I get here how do, let me retrace my steps let me let me see where I went wrong this is time that they're spending like with a little bit of introspection and you know even though they may have cut you out of their life at the time and they may seem very cold-hearted about it uh, they really and truly feel like they're justified in doing this okay uh, sometimes uh, and, and the situation I've got going on here in my head is maybe your partner wasn't as true to you as you had hoped they would be, but I'm also feeling that maybe you weren't, you know, as faithful to them as they should be. So this is obstacles and challenges, fears and anxieties, and this is making you feel like, you know, especially if your person is a water sign and, you know, Capricorn, your earth. So you may be coming across as if you are very flippant, that you just don't really care, that you're not feeling those emotions. You might be having just a little too much pride at the time, but your partner back here, you know, they just have that hermit. They're thinking about things. They're going over things. They're rehashing things. They're remembering all of the good times as well as all of the bad times. They're weighing that pros and cons. If you uh, do want that resurrection of your relationship in your future, okay, you need to maybe pay a little more attention to what your partner is experiencing. Or your second choice is, and you may be feeling like, you know, forget it. I'm just going to walk away from this. I'm going to go find something better, something that I deserve that's better than what I've been through at the time. Okay, this is seeming to be like a really common theme lately with a lot of people I've been reading for. In your outcome, we have a seven of wands as well as the ten of wands. And again, we're talking about that resentment. We're talking about, you know, you're carrying that hurt with you. It's kind of preventing you from moving forward. But at the same time, you know, you, you really care about this person and you may find yourself just a little bit defensive of not only your actions, but uh, defensive of your whole entire relationship. Like when you run into old people and they want to know where your partner is or whatever, you may find yourself uh, taking the side of that person because you don't want to uh, talk bad publicly to other people about your partner and this might give you an opportunity to uh, possibly see things from your partner's point of view okay now for this third and last row we have hold on <coughs> excuse me we have the nine of swords as well as strength okay hold on I'm knocking things everywhere here all right your partner has the devil and the emperor in your obstacles challenges fears and anxieties we have six of swords as well as seven of pinnacles and in your outcome we have the knight of wands and the ten of pinnacles okay now probably we'll draw another card or two when we get near the end but you know this is really this separation is really bothering you. This is something, this person, even though there might have been like these little games that you guys play and this power struggle that is going back and forth, okay? Uh, you get them before they get you and they want to get you before you get them and you're always looking for something to uh, blame or because you need to just relax and enjoy your relationship rather than sit there and stress over it and worry about it because that's really no kind of place to be. You just did have this ten of swords and like I said you were feeling you were feeling hurt you were feeling uh, defensive you are uh, kind of protective of the relationship this is the relationship that you want above all others okay um, yeah all right now your partner Okay, well, you've got the devil as well as the emperor, and they're both here sitting on the thrones. So you may have a partner, uh, not bipolar or anything, but they've got two completely different sides. They have this sexy, passionate, 
uh, way about them, but they can also cause you to feel codependent. This, they can also cause you to feel, and that's what I'm seeing from your reading, is that your whole mood is dependent on this person right here. You're kind of a slave to their emotions, rather than uh, them being uh, the loving, supportive, uh, helpful person. Um, you know, you always have a leader, okay? Now, whenever there is more than one king or one whatever, there's always wars and feuds and things like that. You can't have two bosses in a relationship. And I know you, Capricorn, you're so grounded and you're so regimented and you have things the way that you know that they should be for you in order for you to feel secure. And your partner, uh, especially you know, if they're a water sign, well, that's kind of what I'm feeling here. They are maybe a little more emotional and they're ruled a little bit more by their emotions and their sensitivity. And, you know, this is kind of foreign to you. And so instead of feeling like you're just drifting and floating in a relationship, you want that anchor. You want to be secure in that relationship. So when your partner comes out with this playful side of themselves or controlling side of themselves, it makes you... Uh, kind of battle and compete for that lead role in the relationship. There can't be two emperors in a relationship. All right. Now, of course, your obstacles and challenges are, do I work on it? Do I nurture this relationship? Do I, do I uh, sit here and, you know, try to see things more from my partner's point of view or do I just move on that you know I've, I've done this for years or a while or whatever and you know you're really not getting any significant growth or change from your um, relationship that you're in and so these are these are two things that you're going to have to decide do I stay do I go what's going on and in your outcome, we have that Knight of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles. So you could possibly be having uh, another option come in. Maybe somebody that is an earth sign just like yourself, but maybe has just a lot of fire basically in their chart. This could be like an Aries Taurus cusp person. This could be, uh, you know, Leo and Virgo. Look at this. This could be Sagittarius and Capricorn. But there's another person coming into your life. And this is somebody that is offering you that security, that is offering you that warmth and that passion and that verve that you really need in your life. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and draw just a couple more cards, especially since we have such a new person and option coming in right at the end of the reading. So I'm just going to reach in and just grab randomly. Okay, we have the... Queen of Cups. And so, yeah, definitely this person, this water sign from your past uh, is, you know, they're holding on. They're holding on just as tightly as you are. Uh, a lot of times when you're in those uh, devil relationships, those codependent relationships, when you stop, they start. When you're clinging and holding on too tightly to the relationship, they're coming in. So, just when you decide to walk away and move on and you have another option coming in, your your water person is coming back around and they're not wanting to let you go. Now some of that can be other insecurities, some of it can be um, just the fact that they like to be in control of the situation. A lot of it's their pride. They don't like to think of the fact that you have walked out on them or that you're going to be with somebody else. And it doesn't have a lot of things to do with actual love. Sometimes it has a lot to do with love. They have this little wake-up call. But uh, in your particular situation, only you're going to be able to decide which one of those options it is. Okay, Capricorn, so that is your reading for May 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I just want to take a second and tell you guys thank you so much for all of your likes, shares, subscribes, comments. It really means so much to me. And thank you guys so much for your very generous donations. And it really enables me to continue to be here and keep making these videos for you here on YouTube. I love you all very much, and I appreciate you. Okay, bye-bye.